Hey, how's everybody doing? I hope everybody's doing good. Um, just got home from work and needed something to do for a few minutes, so I thought I would uh, do what I usually do when I have nothing to do. And and then after I did that, I wiped my hands off, and uh, now I'm going to do a video. Yes, I have a dirty mind. Live with it. Thought I'd wear my one of my old Al Jorgensen influenced hats, Uncle Al from Ministry, of course. Anyway, um, I'm going to go through. Uh, just uh, another video of pulling a few things off the shelf and um, kind of talking about them briefly. I'm going to do a bit of a universal theme today. And I'm a little crooked in there. Yeah, how's that? Looks all right to me. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna, it's, it's going to be Universal Monsters, classic Universal Monster uh, tribute. Just some of the stuff I have. I got quite a, quite a bit of uh, things from Universal. I um, did videos and talked about them before. But uh, these are ones I haven't talked about yet. Where are my uh, Metropolis uh, t-shirt? That uh, looks a little bit snug on me now. Again, it says I stayed in another video. A little bit of incentive to lose some weight so I can start wearing these shirts. Shirts again, because I really miss wearing them. And I also really miss not being chubby. So, and But before I do that, I just want to give a shout out to my buddy Ron. Um, co-worker and fellow chef for this um, awesome game he got me for Christmas. And I'm really looking forward to playing it. I just uh, thought it was really cool because he, uh, he knows I like movies and he actually, instead of doing what most people do and just hit the liquor store, you put some thought into this and I really appreciate it. So thank you very much, Ron. This is a, a sick gift that I'm really looking forward to playing. Uh, going on on the inside there just need some batteries and uh, some people to play it with so but um, that will happen we'll just put all this back together and we'll get into uh, the collectibles here there we go and then, oops. Yeah. it's like a big uh, obviously designed to look like a VHS uh, cassette just immense actually a place I used to work we I don't know what it was for it was old school technology I guess now it's a company used to, a satellite company I used to work for and they had to load VHS style tapes that were about this big I don't know how many hours they ran or anything but um, obviously the days before digital so um, let's get into this first up I got um, sorry itchy nose but you know throw my glasses they, um, do they look good with a hat I don't care but <clears throat> anyway this is um, the mummy from uh, mummy 1932 with, uh, with Boris Karloff this would be the sarcophagus you see in the beginning of the movie and then when you open it up <clears throat> there's a uh, the mummy. Hope it's uh, bright enough in here. I just I gotta get every time I put a light here to do the videos, it just blasts me with light and everything's washed out. But uh, just also when 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 the time change changes and the lights slide out longer, it'll be a little bit better when I'm doing videos from this spot. But anyway, it's uh again this is a NECA a NECA toy, so you can really see. As, as per usual other other things I always talk about NECA but there's other other companies uh, McFarlane being another one of the other like main one that I, that I like that put just as much detail into them but like just look at the face like that that looks like it and even like like in the movie he, he, he wasn't all bandaged up he had slick back hair which which they've done here they've done it very accurately and the sarcophagus the top of the sarco uh, sarcophagus is really well done you can see so that's the first one that was Boris Karloff of course I think his real name was William Henry Pratt and then he changed it when he became an actor I think I, I don't know the whole history of, of that but I know it was uh, it was a different he had a different name but that was William Henry Pratt I believe and uh, anyway here's uh, Wolfman from 19, is it 1941, I think? I can't remember the exact year. This, of course, would be um, <clears throat> Lon Chaney Jr. 
I have is actually glued his foot to the base because uh, one thing about NECA is because they're solid, they got thick tops, they're usually top heavy and they have a tendency to flop over. So I will often glue things into place. I'm not buying them to save them and sell them later anyway. So they're decorations, I buy them to display them. A few things still in the box, but not these because I like them. But again, yeah, that, look, that looks like uh, the Wolfman from, from the original film in the green uh, jacket. I don't know, it, the movie's in black and white, but it's assumed that it would be green anyway for some reason. It just it looks like, it just looks right. Funny thing about that one, in the transformation scene, he's uh, wearing a tank top, and then a few minutes later when you see him out in the, in the forest, he's wearing a jacket. So it's like, oh, well, did the wolf man decide he's going to get chilly and throw on a coat just to be safe? And um, so that was Lon Chaney... Lon Chaney Jr. and here I got Lon Chaney Sr. Phantom of the Opera. A little dusty. I haven't dusted them off in a while. But uh, anyway, yeah, it's Phantom of the Opera from uh, I think 19. I want to say 1923, 1924. I can't remember the exact date. But again, these are these are all NECA toys, so you can really see the the detail and the work put into it. Stands on the, the base, which I guess is like the uh, uh, the basement of under underneath the uh, the opera house where the Phantom lived. And this is his organ that come that came with it. It's pretty detailed. Looks good. It's hollow. And if you're wondering what that hand is, you can you can change the hands on a lot of the NECA toys. They just pop out, and you can put a different hand in depending on how you want it to look. So, but so I wouldn't lose it. I just taped it to the inside. And um, oops. and it's got like the uh, playbook for the organ on top. It's uh, Don Juan. So I guess it's like would be the music for for like the Don Juan if it was being played up on the on the stage upstairs above the where he lives in the catacombs. But, but uh, that's that. So these are really dusty. <laughs> I didn't even think to dust them off first, but yeah, so this would be the organ he'd be playing in the movie. So I'll put that out of the way. And then here I got uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. This is one of the first things I ever bought. Actually, I think the very first thing I bought in terms of these collectibles was the, the Phantom I just showed you. But, and there's a lot of articulation on this. It's really well made. Everything moves, even the head. The head moves somewhat, like goes up and down. But yeah, there's so much articulation. Like his body bends, legs. I don't oddly though, I don't think his knees bend, but the feet bend. So now that I've been doing all this, it's going to be fun trying to get him back on the shelf because he's very top heavy and he does have a tendency to to fall over. So the um, it's a little cartoony and exaggerated because the original hands and the feet weren't quite so big, but that's all right. But a lot of detail. The hands look pretty cool. So. <clears throat> and I got one more here. Blue. And this is another Phantom of the Opera. This is him in his in his cape and hat with with the mask on. Um, the body itself underneath the cape is essentially the same as the other one, but it's got the the masked face, the hat, and uh, the base is slightly different. But it's got the same, still a lot of good detail in there. The capes, the capes really well done too. It's got like wrinkles in it and make it look um, like it's flowing. And these, you know, they got decent articulation too. The hands move, the arms move, and even the knees bend on these ones slightly, which is good because so you can steady them depending on how the arms are, so it doesn't flop over. But um, yeah, and. 
and this one instead of the whoops, popped off there. But instead of the um, very dusty. Why didn't I dust? But in, instead of the uh, oh, pieces are coming apart here. But the organ that he has with the other one, he's got his violin. And again, the same playbook in a different color, though, Don Juan. But, you know, even like the violin, again, I apologize for all the dust, but the violin is very well detailed. The, the stand moves like a real stand and even comes off. <laughs> That's good, it's supposed to. But it does rock back and forth. It's really kind of cool. So, oops, that was the violin. But, yeah, but NECA does a lot of, a lot of great things. But yeah, the violin, it's just... But, um, yeah, that was like a few things off my shelf. And, um... Hope you, um, enjoyed it or got something, I don't know, I'm not going to say something out of it. It's not, it wasn't really an informative thing, but just, uh... It, uh, got your curiosity going, I guess. And maybe, uh, if you got collectibles, you want to make videos and share them, you know, subscribe, and then I'll find you online, and I'll subscribe to you, and uh, see what you got, but uh, that's all I'm going to say about that, and again, uh, thank you, Ron, for that gift, I really, really look forward to playing it, and I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, I guess until the next one, take care.